The Flip Wilson Show. With special guest star, David Frost. And now, here's Flip. Welcome to the show. And I want to say that since this is the first program, uh, for quite a while now, everyone's been stopping me and asking me, what's the Flip Wilson show going to be like? You know, I've been getting calls at my house all hours of the night saying, what's the Flip Wilson show going to be like? Yesterday, uh, a guy ran in the side of my car at an intersection. <laughs> and I got out and I walked over to him and he said, I stopped you because I wanted to ask you what the Flip Wilson show <laughs> is going to be like. So I've been trying to be, uh, get it together in a way that I could be as explicit about it as possible. And I decided the best way to put it would be to say, watch out. <laughs> That's all, watch out. We're gonna have a lot of fun, hopefully. And uh, so far we've been having the ball. We think you're gonna dig it. Now, since this is the first program, everyone figured we should open with a big production number. You know, you know something really fancy. A lot of great scenery, beautiful costumes, you know, dancing girls, the works. <laughs> and uh, we gave it serious thought. But when we got into the meetings on the planning of it, we found out that the opening number that we had planned, to, for this number, it would cost $104,000. I said, gentlemen, this is ridiculous. This show is gonna start off in the hole if you do it like that. I said, everybody's seen those fancy production numbers on the other shows. But how many people have ever seen $104,000? <laughs> so so uh, I decided that we'd open this show by showing you what $104,000 looks like. Uh, may I have the envelope, please? <laughs> well, what you doing with your hand on the gun? <laughs> You know, people can't relax and enjoy looking at the money and you standing there with your hand on the gun. No, <laughs> <laughs> what's <laughs> well, I bet if I tripped you and ran, you couldn't catch me. <laughs> yeah, well, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. $104,000. 500 is actual cash. <laughs> now, wasn't that much better than watching a bunch of girls jumping all around on the stage? <laughs> You're gonna take that back to the bank, right? Don't go home with that money. <laughs> if the bank's closed when you get there, slip it under my dressing room door, I'll watch it for you. <laughs> you know, James Brown used to be a fighter, and James is on the show, and we've been discussing fighting during the rehearsal the last few days, and uh, when we were on the subject, the conversation came up, I was telling James about uh, this buddy of mine who took fighting uh, private lessons from Muhammad Ali. Well, let me tell you what happened. Uh, Muhammad had invited a guy by his house for dinner Sunday evening. So the guy goes by, they had dinner, and they're sitting around after dinner, and the fellow says, uh, Muhammad, he says, since you're not fighting anymore right now, uh, would you mind giving me a few private lessons? So Muhammad said, no, I don't mind. The fellow said, well, how much would you charge me for 10 easy lessons? Mom said, well, 10 lessons, $15 a lesson, $150. Phil said, great. Took out the money, paid Muhammad right then, sat. <laughs> Muhammad said, uh, look, you come by tomorrow morning, which would have been Monday morning, and I'll give you your first lesson. Nine o'clock the next morning, the guy shows up at Muhammad's house. They go out in the backyard. Muhammad says, uh, now you gotta listen to these instructions. If you wanna learn about fighting, you gotta listen very close. So now the first thing I want to tell you is, when you're fighting, watch out for the other man's left. You understand that? He said, watch out for the left. Now he knows you're going to be watching, so you got to watch harder than him. <laughs> you know? But whatever you do, don't stop watching out. Watch out. He said, you understand that? I said, yes, I understand. Muhammad said, now look, don't tell me you understand if you don't. <laughs> 
understand? I'm watching. I'm saying, bam! Hit the fella right now. In the left eye. See that? See that? I told you to watch out. Said you said you were watching and you weren't. The guy's eyes popped up. Well, I'm saying, now here, the second thing I gotta tell you is once your eye is closed, your opponent knows that you can't see from that side. So he's gonna be moving to your left. So now you have to watch that side. Said, you understand? I said, yes. I said, I'm watching. Mohammed said, are you watching the left side? I said, yes, I'm watching. Said, Bam! Hit him in the right eye. So now you can't spend all your time watching one side. No, you gotta watch both sides. Because your opponent is watching you watch. So I said, uh, Mohammed, he said, how's my footwork? Mohammed went, smash! Hit him in the mouth. So now another thing I gotta tell you is don't talk to a man when you're fighting. <laughs> said, you're in the ring to fight. Don't get in there and start trying to socialize with the man. <laughs> said, if you got any talking you wanna do, like predicting anything, you gotta do that before you get in the ring. Get in the ring and start no conversation. So bam, bam, left hooks, right crosses, jabs, uppercuts. After 30 minutes, Muhammad says, look, I'm tired. <laughs> that's enough for the day. So I said, okay, Muhammad. <laughs> Eyes are closed, couple teeth missing, head is three sizes larger. I said, okay, Muhammad. I said, when do I get my next lesson? Muhammad said, look, I'll give you next lesson. Uh, you show up here Wednesday at 12 o'clock and I'll fix you up. Wednesday at 12 o'clock, the guy doesn't show. Now, Muhammad's a gentleman. You know, he doesn't drink, smoke, run around with reckless women, none of that. And Muhammad gave the guy his word. He was going to give him the lessons and the guy didn't show up. So Muhammad didn't want the fella to think he was cheating him. So Muhammad went to his house. It would have been the same thing if the fella had been a mountain. <laughs> Woo! So Muhammad goes to the fella's house, you know, and the guy's laying there, you know. And Muhammad says, how come you didn't show up for your lessons? The fella said, Muhammad said, I've been intending to talk to you about that. Said, uh, when I first came to you and uh, brought up the subject of these lessons, said it wasn't my intention to uh, fight as a professional. Said, I never had that much in mind. I didn't want to learn all that about it. Said, it's my neighbor. Said, I don't like my neighbor. Said, I just wanted to learn enough from you to mess him up real bad. <laughs> Muhammad said, then, then you don't want the money back. Fell said, no. Said, uh, it isn't that. Said, I don't want the money back. Said, I want you to keep the money. Said, but I figured the best way to do this would be to send my neighbor over to your house to take the rest of my lesson. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome to a special edition of The David Frost Show. Tonight, my guest is a very unusual young lady. When she was a little girl, she went to school where she learned that money isn't everything, it's happiness that counts. So her mother sent her to a different school. <laughs> Tonight, she comes to us as the average woman. Won't you welcome, please, Miss Geraldine Jones? <laughs> Honey. Well, welcome to the show. Won't you make yourself comfortable, Gerald? I'd do that. Would you, uh, yeah. would you care for a cigarette? I don't drink, I don't smoke, and I don't do windows. <laughs> are we on the air, sugar? We certainly are, honey. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought you were going to give me a little warning so I could fix myself. <laughs> Care for a shot? <laughs> no, thank you. I had it set this morning. No. Well, Geraldine, I suppose we'd better get started. Which camera am I on? The one over there. Look, that one there with the mm -hmm. red light. Do they see me everywhere? Everywhere. Hello, killer. <laughs> That's my boyfriend, killer. killer. Whoa! <laughs> you get. <laughs> Pr 
promises promises. Well, tell us... Uh, <laughs> tell us a little something about your childhood. Well, honey, when I was a kid, we didn't have television and all that stuff. The only entertainment we had was hiding behind the couch. <laughs> yes, honey. You mentioned Mr. Killer earlier on. Um, do you have a relationship with him? Not only that, but we going together. <laughs> Watching by yourself. Are you and uh, Mr. Killer engaged? Not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? What I said, not exactly. He gave me a ring, I just couldn't keep up the payments. <laughs> but he likes you. For instance, does he, does he like your cooking? He raves about it to all his friends. Let me tell you, yep. one time I accidentally put rat poison in the coffee. Killer said it was the first decent cup of coffee I ever made. <laughs> How do you feel about uh, conditions for women in general? Honey, let me tell you. Beside your show, the news is my favorite program. Your show and news, I watch them all the time. And uh, I listen to what everybody has to say about everything. But honey, let me tell you, can't nobody tell Geraldine what to say. Geraldine to say what she want to say. And I've listened to all of them. And it's my opinion that the cost of living's going up and the chance of living's going down. <laughs> And would you say that you're a creative person, Geraldine? Who do you think made this outfit? Coco Chanel, eat your heart out. <laughs> I hadn't realized, you know, you really are quite a couturier. You better watch your mouth, honey. <laughs> you don't know me, you just met me. <laughs> Watch you, I turn this television studio out. Would you? That's right, honey. Well, you know, I you hello? You know that I usually end an interview by asking my guests to give a definition of something like love. Um, do you think you're qualified to, to speak of love? Honey, I paid my dues. <laughs> no, but if you don't mind I me, mean, for instance, what is your definition of love? <laughs> love? Love is a feeling you feel when you're about to feel a feeling you never felt before. <laughs> That's marvellous, Geraldine. An incredibly moving statement. You've been a lovely and an interesting guest, and uh, I want to thank you for being with us tonight. Good night. Good night? <laughs> what do you mean, good night? I didn't even sing yet. You gonna ask me to sing, ain't you? Sing? You ask all your other guests to sing. Well, I hadn't planned on a song, you know, right here. Well, you better change your plan. <laughs> I didn't have this trouble with Mom's Maple. And I didn't have this trouble with Johnny Carson either. <laughs> I didn't know you could sing. Well, you know it now. I'm the Wayne Newton of 125th Street. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Fancy you being musically inclined. Honey, I got rhythms I haven't used yet. <laughs> well, then, Geraldine, Don't I better... Don't fight the feel, honey. Geraldine, I've had a terrific idea. Why don't you sing for us? Well, if you insist. <laughs> oh, watch my purse from the week. Never mind. <laughs> Hit it, maestro. All of me. Why not take all of me? Can't you see? I'm no good without you. Take my lips. I want to lose them. Take my arms. I never use them. No goodbye. Left me with eyes that cry. How can I go on here without you?
was a Sunday that Reverend Leroy was going to give his famous sermon. I hadn't heard the sermon. I wasn't there this Sunday. But he was going to give his sermon about, uh, it was, the title of the sermon was, The Road to Easy Street Runs Through the Sewer. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was uh, the text of Reverend Leroy's sermon. So there's a big crowd there, you know. Everybody wanted to hear about it. Uh, well, I mean, an actual big crowd. Quite a few instances uh, in the past when I said a big crowd, uh, I might have... Uh, stretched it a little bit this instance there was actually a big crowd at least 15 people <laughs> and uh reverend Roy came on and his de deacon deacon uh harry deacon harry that was <laughs> reverend Roy's old friend they had the same parole officer <laughs> <laughs> so uh reverend Roy comes on and since the crowd was so small he decided to hold back on the sermon rev said uh today brothers and sisters said uh i'm not going to do the sermon about easy street he said, uh, in fact, what I think I'll do is we'll pass the plate, and then next week we'll have our regular service and a matinee. <laughs> <laughs> said, uh, but we are going to pass the plate. So they shot the plate around the room, and the plate came back. Reverend Leroy dismissed everybody. Then he called the deacon aside and said, uh, Deke said, uh, why don't you go home and get your record player, some of them Ray Charles records. I got some sandwiches, and we'll go up to the haunted house and have us a little party. <laughs> so Deke said, yeah. <laughs> so Dick ran home, got his record play, you know, Rev got the sandwiches, and he had a little flask. I don't know what was in the flask. I assume it was sacred. Uh, the wine? Yes. I guess. Sacred the, wine. Sacred wine? Yeah. No, it was regular wine. He didn't get it out of no <laughs> sacred liquor store. <laughs> so they go up to the haunted house, you know, and they walk in, and there's a lot of weird sounds in a haunted house. You know, so they walk in, Deke was kind of nervous, and they plugged in the record play, you know, and Deke's opening potato salad, Reb's opening the mustard and the cold cuts, that kind of thing. <laughs> Get ready to start the party, and like some wind, you know, there's a... <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the kind of wind that blows in the haunted house. And Deke heard the sound, and Deke wasn't too cool, and he got a little afraid, you know, he made a break toward the door. And Reb said, calm down, man. He said, calm down. He said, well, I heard the strange sound. Rep said, don't worry about it. He said, you don't have to be afraid of nothing. The power's with you. <laughs> he said, really? Rep said, certainly. Sure, I'm here. And you're here, and the power's with me, and the power's with you. He said, you don't have to be afraid of nothing as long as the power's with you. He said, now sit down. <laughs> so, he said, I know he put in a piece, a couple pieces of salami, some mustard on a piece of rye bread, you know, and a little pickle in there on the side. Hold on, I'm done to do a story. I just like pickles. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, he's laying there on the sandwich, and in the next room, a window fell. You know, the wind, of course, the, the thing around the side of the window get loose. Crash! And Deep made another break, and Ref snatched him out of the collar, and Ref said, look, he said, now, if I'd have known you were going to act like this, I'd have bought one of the sisters. <laughs> I could have had a lot more fun with one of the sisters in the haunted house than I'm having with you. <laughs> Say, now I told you, don't be afraid of nothing, because the power is with you. The power is on your side, and the power will not let you down. <laughs> Woo! Watch out! <laughs> They said, okay, okay, whatever you say. <laughs> so they went back over and he just started to sit like that and a ceiling fell. <laughs> now, I want to describe what Deke did. Deke jumped up, he turned around, looked up and down, and dashed. <laughs> now, friends, Deke did not run. And he did not hop, skip, or jump. <laughs> Deep dash. <laughs> and when you dash, you're gone. <laughs> he shot down the road. And all of a sudden, the Reverend shot by the deacon. <laughs> and the deacon shot back by the Reverend. <laughs> and Rev yelled out, he said, brother, don't be afraid, the power's with you. And Dick said, if it is, it's a running mother. <laughs>